Now at 10, part two of our special in-depth report, Monkeys and Medicine. Last night, we took you inside the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center and talked specifically about HIV AIDS vaccine research going on there. There are hundreds of other studies underway at the facility. There are other studies happening at other facilities on campus, but the monkey colony here is the largest. And tonight, David Douglas joins us as we go back inside with a look at the care the animals receive, David. Well, let's break this down for you, Eric. Seven veterinarians, eight vet techs, and a staff dedicated to animal care oversee day-to-day -day operations at the center. This year alone, some $2.8 million will be spent not on experiments, but just animal care. It's a long way from a lush tropical rainforest, but for these research monkeys, this is home. What about putting you in a cage for your whole life and keeping you hungry your whole life? As long as we learn something from that, that must be a good thing to do, right? No, why would it be? Most of the more than 1,400 monkeys at the Wisconsin National Primate Research Center were born in captivity, many right inside the center itself. But that point doesn't satisfy Rick Marolt, who opposes animal research and recently took his message to the radio. I believe very strongly that the experiments are not ethical. These are terrible conditions for animals who are normally very social and live in rainforests and, and open savannas. It's an argument Buddy Capuano, the center's attending veterinarian and associate director of animal services, has heard many times. Living in the wild is not always the best place to be. Sometimes you starve, sometimes you're thirsty, sometimes you're attacked by other species. That's not to say the life of a research animal is easy, but Capuano says his animal care staff does try to create as stimulating an environment as possible. Sometimes the monkeys even listen to music. And one key example is not just giving monkeys all of their food. And it's just harder if they have to work to get it out. They call these foraging devices, putting a step between a monkey and his meal. Something to keep the animal occupied, uh, to keep its mind working, to make it be dexterous to get its food, just like if it was in the wild, having to fight for food. News 3 spent hours inside the primate center and observed clean conditions. The cages are hosed down daily and washed every two weeks at high temperature in a machine similar to a giant dishwasher. Still, none of this sits particularly well with Marolt. They go crazy just being in that cage. It would be irresponsible to think that the monkeys are so different from us that their suffering is a lot different from ours. While center staff and Capuano clearly don't side with opponents like Marolt, they say their stance isn't ignored. It's even respected. They keep me honest all the time. They keep me alert and they keep, every day they make me ask the question, Am I doing as much as I possibly can for these animals? Have they made me think biomedical research is wrong? No. Have they made me always want to find a better way to take care of these animals? Yeah, I admit that. That's fine. Recently, a UW researcher made headlines and ended up in trouble for conditions monkeys were left in. Her research privileges were suspended and have since been reinstated. That incident occurred at the Harlow Lab, not the Primate Research Center. And though we're told clashes between researchers and veterinary staff do happen, Capuano says his veterinary staff makes the ultimate decision on whether an animal continues in an experiment or not. And boy, you can really hear both sides of this argument. You really can. And we do understand sometimes animals, as a result of the experiments, are euthanized. It is not their policy to allow animals to succumb to an illness. So at this facility, last year, 230 animals were euthanized. 153 of those euthanasias were the result of conditions animals developed as a result of experiments, but 77 were for clinical reasons not related to research. I want to get you up to speed on something else, too. Last night at 10, we spoke about HIV research using SIV-infected macaques. Those animals are treated for opportunistic infections in the same way a person with HIV would be, but most are not on any retroviral therapy, as the disease process is what's being studied. And Capuano says animals on infectious disease Projects and experiments are monitored several times a day and always being checked out. And, of course, there are several sides, as you said, and we want to hear what people at home have to say. So please go to our Facebook page and Channel3000.com and share your views with us. It's something that's obviously a big issue in our community, and we'll continue to follow. And if you pose those good questions, we'll make sure they ultimately get answered. Yeah, a lot of passion on both sides of the debate. You did a nice job of spelling out both sides as well. David Douglas reporting tonight. David, thank you very much.